What's up guys, Ashley here and I am back with another video. Here to show you part one of my dream master closet. I moved into my new home a couple of months ago and I asked my builder while building my home to leave my closet completely empty so I could build my own dream closet. And today I'm going to be sharing part one with you guys, the shoe built in. Let's get into it. So the first step in the process is to remove the baseboards. So you can see me scoring the caulk beforehand to make sure that I save the drywall while removing those baseboards. After I score that caulk, I'm just using a hammer and a crowbar to get those baseboards off the wall. Now you wanna make sure when you're using your crowbar that you're not indenting the drywall behind it, but this is a pretty easy step. Once those baseboards are all gone, it is time to start building the frame. Now I'm building the frame out of two by fours and attaching them together with three inch wood screws. This process is pretty simple, a lot easier with an extra set of hands, but as you can see here, I'm getting it done. Now that the frame is all built, it is time to put it in place and attach it to the wall. Now, the most important step about attaching it to the wall is making sure that you are hitting those studs. If you need help, get that good stud finder, find those studs and mark them so when you're ready to attach your frame to the wall, you can do so and it'll be nice and secure. Now here, I'm using a little drill to drill pilot holes first, just to make it easier to screw in the wood screws but it is not required, just a little thing I like to do to help keep the process going a little faster. Once that frame was secured to the wall, I placed a three quarter inch piece of plywood on top so that it was nice and ready to go. Now with the frame all in place, it's time to have a little fun and build out those built-ins. Now to create my built-ins, I'm using pocket holes. Now if you don't have a Craig jig, this is one of my favorite tools to use for DIY. It easily helps me to join my wood together and it's great for beginners. As you can see here, I'm creating my boxes by using some right angle clamps to hold the wood pieces together to join them to create my built-ins. Now if you build alone, Clamps are always your best friend. As you can see here, it's holding the wood into place so I can screw in those screws into the pocket holes. Once I build the outer box of the built-ins, I make sure to add a couple of back supports in order to be able to secure the built-in to the wall once it's in place. Now with the outer built-in all built, it's time to put it in its designated spot and attach it to the wall. Here you can see me starting on the outside because I wanted to make sure that the outside box was square with the door. If you want to start on the inside, please feel free to do so. It's your project, so whatever floats your boat. <laughs> now here you can see me using my stud finder to find the edge of the studs. I love this stud finder because you can use it to find the, each edge so you know exactly where to screw in your screws. Here I'm just putting in a couple of screws to make sure that the built-in is nice and secure to the wall. Once the outer built-in pieces were in place, it was time to add the additional shelving. Now, because I'm building alone, I like to build my things in place so that I don't have to carry them in. Once you start putting those pieces in, it starts to get really heavy. So here I'm just adding the additional shelving for my shoe built in. I mean, a girl's gotta have some shoe space. A fun little thing that I like to do with pocket holes, if the shelving is taller than I am, I will place the pocket holes on top so that you can't see them when you look up. And if the shelving is shorter than I am, I put the pocket holes at the bottom so you can't see them. Once the shelving is all in, it is time to trim the baby out to make it look nice and clean. First, I just put a little glue on the back of the one by two 
and then I place it in its desired area and then use a brad nailer to attach it to the piece. Now, in some areas, there may be a little overhang. You can kind of decide where you want that overhang to be. On the horizontal shelves, I'm putting the one by two trim flush to the top, so there's a little overhang underneath the bottom. But feel free to decide where you want your overhang to be on your project. Now, since this is a custom closet, I want it to be a little bit fancy, so I decided to add some fluted casing to the side and I love how it turned out. This fluted casing is basically just a trim piece that I found and I added a couple pieces to the side to give it a little flavor. So I attached those pieces by first putting on a little bead of glue behind it and then using my brad nailer to attach. Now something like this would work better with a trim nailer. Um, unfortunately, mine was in storage, so I used a brad nailer instead and that did just fine. Now with everything all trimmed out, it was time to add the drawer. So first I started with building the drawers. I'm using Select Pine as well on the drawers just to give it a nice fresh look. Now when I'm building the drawer, I make sure to place the pocket holes on the front and the back piece so when I install the drawer, the pocket holes will be hidden. The front face will cover the front and obviously you can't see the back. So rule of thumb when you're making drawers, make sure you place those pocket holes so they can't be seen when you're done. Once I build the outer frame of the drawer, I take a quarter inch piece and place it on the bottom and attach it with a staple gun. Now you wanna make sure you use a staple gun if you're putting a quarter inch piece underneath because the material is really dense. Something like a brad nailer wouldn't work well with this. So make sure you use that glue and get that staple gun. Once I had my drawers all built out, I took the pieces off of the drawer slides to attach them to the drawer. Here I'm just putting them on the bottom so they will slide right in. Once I get the drawer in, I pull it in and out a little bit just to get that movement going and then it's on to start making the face frames. Now a little trick I use to make sure that there's even spacing on the face front is using a deck of cards to kind of shimmy the face front to get it to where I want it. See? And then I use my brad nailer, shoot one or two brad nails into the front to hold it into place so that I can open the drawer and clamp it. Now once it's clamped, I go from the back and screw in two screws to secure that face front to the drawer. Now with the drawers all in, we are at the last step, adding the trim to the shoe built in. Now a lot of people were asking me, why don't you build it all the way to the top? Well. Now you can see, I wanted to add a big piece of trim to the bottom and to the top to match the trim in my house. So I left that spacing there to do so. Now to make it nice and clean, I added those trim pieces to the top and bottom and my shoe built in was done. Now, if you were paying attention in the beginning, you probably noticed that there was an outlet on this shoe built in wall. And a lot of people were messaging me on Instagram asking why I covered the outlet, but I'm happy to show you what I did with it. That's right, I integrated an outlet into one of my drawers. Now, if you're interested in seeing how I did that, you'll have to stay tuned for part two. All right, y'all, later.